and welcome everyone to another live stream here in the world of Vera. And boy, do we have an exciting stream today. We are back again looking at one of the most defining features of Ashes of Creation, the node system. And I am joined today by a regular face on the uh, live stream. One of our glorious senior designers, Mr. Chris. How you doing, Chris? Oh, I'm doing swell. I don't know if I'd say regular, though. Well, I mean, well, you know, there was once before, right? There was one other time. <laughs> that's, that's regular. Now it's two times. That's a regular thing, right? I don't know. I feel like you're a regular on the stream. <laughs> that's true. That's true. That's true. That's true. All right. I apologize. We are joined once again by one of our glorious designers, Mr. Chris. <laughs> How well, you doing, thanks, buddy? For <laughs> thanks for having me. It's great to be here. And for those of you who don't know, Chris is uh, our resident expert when it comes to nodes. He lives, eats, breathes, and any other normal bodily function that's required revolves around the node system. Um, so I'm glad to have you with us because <sighs> you know what there needs to be known about nodes. Where uh, are we? Oh, sorry, uh, we're yes. we're yeah, lots of things need to be known, but we're uh, outside of a beautiful node that's around the corner a little bit. Okay, and I uh, believe I am the uh, self-appointed mayor of this node for the purposes of what we're going to be demonstrating a little bit later. Yeah, the citizens aren't super happy that you um, you know invalidated the election process, but wow, wow, it's not an invalidation; it's a uh, reaffirmation of the correct election process. <laughs> so tell me what we're doing out here today what are what are we going to be showcasing here it's been a long time since we've actually taken a look um at nodes as many of you know the last time we saw nodes was back during alpha one in august of 2021 wow um <clears throat> and nodes during that time were you know relatively early functional version they had a lot of the core systems and functionality present that we saw which was you know constructing buildings and participating in quest hubs uh they were able to purchase housing and become citizens um, there was all that there but they were a very early representation of it and definitely not visually or aesthetically what we wanted to present that's going to be part of what we're showing but what are we doing out here today and let me while you tell me what we're doing i'm just going to adjust some of the uh the winds yeah, for sure. Um, well, today we're going to walk through kind of the general process of what it takes to build a building. Um, you know, we're going to get some materials. Uh, we're going to get the nodes some materials. We're going to get the nodes some money. Um, and we're going to build ourselves a little service building. Nice. So we're going to go <clears throat> generally around the loops that players can expect. And, and obviously nodes are a huge uh, system. They are as I said, one of the defining features of Ashes of Creation, what sets us apart from other MMOs, they reflect the change that exists within the environment based off of player activity, player actions, um, and players have governance over these nodes, both from a mayoral perspective and the way that citizens interact with the decisions that the mayor is, is, is utilizing. And as a mayor, one of those core loops is, as you mentioned, buy orders. Tell me, should I be starting one of these? How would I go about doing that? Yeah, so you probably should do that. Um, there is a lovely menu you can open with the node button, N. Okay, all right. Oh, I see the node here. Um, and then you're going to go to the treasury page. Got it. I am on the treasury, and I see there's a no. number of different items in our node inventory. Yeah, so these are... These are node commodities, um, and they're the resources the node uses for lots of things like um, siege defense. They're going to use it for maintenance. They're going to use it to build buildings. They're going to trade it with other nodes. Cool. And these are these are essentially the resources that the node are going to be using in order to initiate those activities, that, like construction projects you were mentioning, or uh, trading with other nodes. And how, what is the method by which we actually acquire as a node these goods? Because these goods are not things that exist within player inventories, but rather they are generated by players interfacing with the environment in some way, shape, or form, and then bringing those materials to the node to get transitioned into these node uh, inventory items. Exactly. So we're going to do what's called a buy order. So if you look in the bottom left of your treasury screen, you're going to see a little plus button. Um, you can click that and it'll open you up to a big list of commodities that you can select to um, kind of 
set some settings on the buy orders. Okay, cool. This is looking good. And just uh, always, as usual, guys, um, everything that you see is a work in progress. We are moving towards our Alpha 2, so you get to see, as part of our open development, you know, things that are still works in progress, like the UI. Uh, this is a functional UI system, but it is not the version of our of our final UI artistically. Um, same is true for everything you see in the environments and in the world. Um, so what should I be selecting today? What do we need? What are we trying so, to build? You're going to need some bins of stone. We're going to build a forge today oh, or nice. a smithy. We smithy, renamed okay. it. It's not a forge anymore. Okay, cool. Uh, and uh, you're going to need bins of stones for it. All right. So I see bins of stone in the industrial goods section. And yep. over on the right hand side, I see that I have the ability as the mayor to customize um, the buy order. And what elements of this would I want to customize and why? Yeah, so um, the first thing you see at the top is the recipe, right? Um, the recipe is going to change the mins and maxes of the parameters you see below, how much you can pay players for these items, how long you can keep them active, and. Um, the ingredients are options you have for um, the recipe that you've picked, right, for different materials. So obviously, not all materials are going to be local to all locations. So kind of picking the right things to either incentivize players from a long distance mm -hmm. to bring things to you or um, picking things local because you need them now and you need them fast and you need them for a low amount of right. uh, investment. Okay, so <clears throat> the first thing I'm looking at is this purchase price. And is this what I'm paying players essentially from the node treasury uh, on a per item basis of these of these materials? So uh, a buy order comes as a package, so players uh, deliver them as a package. Okay. Um, so and they you are paying per package functionally but that is not in gold it's in node currency which is Got the it. primary way that nodes are going to reward players okay cool and um <clears throat> so when i'm purchasing that package is it that i'm buying one basalt and one uh, halcyonite and that is a package or am i buying 50 basalt and 50 halcyonite and that is a package uh that's going to depend on the recipe um but uh, so it's not exactly always going to be the same amount of each, it. Um, and it the amounts it's per package will vary based on the amount of investment the node has to um, put into the buy order. Okay, cool. All right, so I'm going to set this, um, you know, because I am a benevolent mayor, and uh, I believe that people should be rewarded for their hard work and effort in helping to establish what the node uh, that we are collectively a part of needs. And I'm going to set that to two, right? Just above no. the minimum. Um, just and I will say, above it. the more you pay, the more it will cost the node's treasury. Oh, okay. Maybe I'll set this back down to one. No, I'm just <laughs> kidding. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding. Now you see why the citizens are mad. <laughs> Wait a minute. They're not mad. They're perfectly happy. We just had a uh, election last week. There's a 99% uh, um, approval rating for me. So, And that 1%, they mysteriously left the node. I don't know where they went. They were in a plane. <laughs> Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Okay, so, all right, dura duration-wide, uh, duration-wise, let's see, three days. Now, is this the amount of time that players have the opportunity to kind of turn these these things in? Exactly. So, um, the last slider that you have there is quantity, um, and basically, when you initiate a buy order, the node is paying for it, right? Um, so, regardless of whether players finish it, uh, you've paid for it. So the longer it's up, you know, the more likely you are to get paid out. Um, but the shorter windows allow people to kind of capitalize it, you know, capitalize on it. Sure. You know, the early bird gets the worm. And just to be clear, I know exactly what many of the people in the audience are thinking. That if I was the mayor and I knew what types of buy orders I was intending to launch at some date... I could inform, you know, via some type of insider trading, uh, what that is going to be so that people had time potentially to bring those resources to the node in advance and purchase out all the buy orders. Yeah, that is definitely true. The mayor does have some power to um, give people warning, but they also have the power to pull the rug out from under those people too, right? Yeah, Tell them you need of bins of stone and you're gonna, you need, you know, basalt and halcyonite but you actually 
use uh, iron. Okay, interesting. And then that way, if they are bringing those things, usually via caravan, given that a lot of the quantities for these types of biodors are going to be relatively large in order to accommodate the necessary uh, material components that the node requires, um, they might be subject to attack, potentially, right? And so reputation matters here. So I see that... that in choosing quantity, I'm choosing 116 different packages, which means I'll get 116 basalt and 116 halcyonite, and that will help us to finish this project, yeah? Correct. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and schedule this order. Uh, order details, okay, yes, let's see. Great. Oh, okay, so this package has a, it's not a one-to-one -one per se. This is 117 packages, which will constitute a total of 696 basalt and 232 halcyonite. Um, total reserve cost is 25. I'm going to confirm this. Okay, All right. There we go. All right. So it's kicking off. All right. So I assume you've brought me out here. Now, I don't normally participate in direct menial labor as the mayor of this node. But for demonstration purposes, I will help you uh, um, uh, collect some of these resources. Uh, we're, yes. I, I see we're out here in a beautiful part of the world. This is obviously the Riverlands, uh, which many of our uh, audience are accustomed to seeing. <clears throat> this will be one of the primary locations uh, that we will be testing for Alpha 2. Um, it is expansive. It is large. It is probably larger than most MMOs, just as a single biome <laughs> that people have participated in. Uh, but I see we have some uh, familiar house tonight here. Yep, I've got some insider information from the artisanship team on where we need to go. Nice, very cool. Ah, we've added some blue smoke. I see to the uh, to the and uh, to the effects here. Looks very good. I see some there's some basalt here as well. And so players who who are interested in see this kind of update at the node um, of the the necessary. Uh, materials requested not all the time will those materials be in the locality of that node right that's that's as you were mentioning a bit strategic for the node to either select material components that yield the type of node inventory items necessary or commodities necessary based on the geolocation of that correct and uh they might not even have access to buy orders for certain uh node commodities that are local to them Right. Okay. So higher tier commodities will be, uh, you know, further away. Very cool. And will players around the world have an opportunity to inspect the types of biodors that are currently listed at a um, at a particular note? Yeah, they will be able to. Cool. Very cool. So those of you uh, who so, are yeah. traders and, and are interested in kind of, I'm going to start moving down this road now. Those All of right. you who are traders and are interested in. Um, in actually capitalizing on the supply and demand of, of nodes and you know their competing interests and what they're trying to accomplish will have an opportunity to uh, to move those goods around the world, take that risk potentially, uh, but receive a high reward um, as a result. Exactly. Ooh, I see we have someone up ahead here. Who is this? Uh, oh! Looks like a lovely guard. A guard doing his duty. Let me let me pay him a visit and tell him how wonderful of a job he is doing. Fare thee well, guard. Hello. Stop when your mayor is talking. Hey. Listen, they're busy people. Does he not recognize my authority? And he is he stretching in front of me? Do, do I bore you? <laughs> Unbelievable. We're going to have to have a talk with his commander. This is a beautiful area. I mean, the environment team did a, did a phenomenal job, obviously. Always. And I think one of the big things that people are going to be in for a surprise here as we showcase uh, this glorious node. Where are we going, by the way? This is Winstead? This is the lovely Winstead node. So one of the biggest differences that people are going to notice today and of course it's very important to keep in mind i'll go into walk mode here i don't run into my own node um it's very important to keep in mind that nodes in alpha one the last time we saw them <clears throat> were very placeholder right as i said they were core functionality but artistically they did not represent the aesthetic of nodes that we were intending to um to create and the environment team uh, has been hard at work 
in creating obviously the different stages of these nodes, but also in representing the type of visual fidelity that we want to represent uh, within the cities of our game. And I believe that we have arrived at Winstead and we are joined by some additional glorious members of the development team. I see two of them here. We have Mr. Tristan, our lead environment artist. Tristan, how you doing, buddy? Hello, welcome. I'm doing very well. How are you? I'm doing very good. We just went for a little stroll, got some resources, and now we're showing right. up back to the you node. Got, you got everything we need? I do. I think I have everything we need. Uh, get... <laughs> we also have with us, I see, Adam. How you doing, buddy? I am good. Thank you. Another um, one of our glorious environment artists. Yes. And there's and, one more missing. He's around here somewhere. What? Where is he? Is he, is he over, over here? here? What is this? Is this the caravansary, by the way? It is the what caravansary. Is oh, very cool. Hold on. I'm going to come look over there, but let me just take a look at what's going on in here real quick. Beautiful. And this is where players will have an opportunity to reserve certain caravan stalls. Um, they'll be able to kit out, and we'll be showcasing this in a future live stream, probably a couple months away or so, um, where you can kit out your uh, caravan with different components. You can upgrade these, uh, and this that is a default building, correct? The nodes don't select and create those uh, by agency, correct. but they come by default. Yeah, that is a building that comes with the node, though it is upgradable by the node. I see. Now, where where is our third? Where is James? Hello. Oh, we have found him. Welcome, James. Hey, I was just uh, doing some stuff at my house. I was oh, an early able... citizen. I was oh. able to get some real estate. Very nice. Okay, look at that. Beautiful little house you have there. It's quaint. I think that's the appropriate term, right? Quaint? Are you well, paying you your know, taxes on that? You don't really pay us enough, so... Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. It is not the mayor's job to assign these salaries. This is a purely capitalist society those are that you need to speak to your your corporate head <laughs> I, I didn't vote for you <laughs> oh, oh no uh, uh, hey we'll guys, be talking after some, this stream <laughs> i gotta hit with some bad news uh james is invisible oh james where are you i drank a potion of invisibility Oh, very nice. I can see you, James. I think you look you well, look very nice awesome. for me. Uh, that's because you're the mayor. Yes, that is correct. <laughs> I see all. I'm the mayor of yeah. Sauron. No, I'm just kidding. Well, let's let's head into um, the node and and take a look here. This is, I mean, truly a sight to see. I love the layout. I love the aesthetic. You guys did a phenomenal job. Um, with actually representing i think what we want out of the out of the node i mean the visually it's just it looks great oh look at a little piglet yeah you oh. might find a few little small farm animals to hang out with around the town but... those guys are great a little piglet talk to me a little bit about what it what it took to bring this node online and to the to the visual fidelity that we wanted to <laughs> a lot <laughs> yeah. um, said there's, there's far more than just making the art here um, look good it's also anticipating how we're going to approach uh, eight different races or more um, in terms of the amount of assets that we have to create so it's more of a it's not just an artistic problem it's a logistic problem right so we have so much to do um, when it comes to the world in terms of the biomes and making this all work and functional because um, all this is dynamic you know this isn't set in stone this is something that's going to be spawned and created by the players and built up by the players so. and that of course makes it entirely more complex uh, oh yeah 100 yes. percent like it, yep we had to develop new systems for how we develop the art how we lay out the art how design can use the art just so that you know it can be dynamic it can be different races Right. Um, and it can show up in different biomes. Yeah. So. Yeah. Not to mention we had to build up a, a new aesthetic to, you know, really sell an Ashes of Creation look. Uh, Steven, before you go any further, can I show you something real quick? Yes, absolutely. Right back over here. You just come back here. I am, I am on my Where's way. Where, oh, this is cool. So there's like these little back alley areas where... You know, Tristan, why don't you go with him? No, yeah. no. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's okay. We posted something up here. Oh, what is this? Oh. Oh, who's that little fella? 
Who is Tristan? What? Have you seen me? <laughs> uh, is that? <laughs> Who is it. that guy? Is that Tristan? Yeah. yeah that's Tristan. Is that Lord <laughs> oh, Snod himself? Goodness. Oh, wow. <laughs> I am currently on the uh, missing board. Here. You're on the missing <laughs> <Yep>. board. Yeah. <laughs> it's all right. At least people care about me. Hey. Oh, <laughs> they're, they're, awesome. they're sad that I'm I'm missing. Yes. No, you're, you have a bounty on your head. Yeah, yeah. the reward oh. the reward is 10 cents. So. <laughs> uh, well, no. I'll take it. Uh, <laughs> At least somebody's paying attention to me and where mm -hmm. I am and where my whereabouts are. That is, Aww. That is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> so talk to me a little bit about, um, you know, we're going to get back to your the systems real quick uh, in a second, guys. But I want to I want to just kind of go over what are some of the unique hurdles that we are accomplishing through the development of these nodes, especially considering that they have to go through multiple different stages of development from, you know, crossroads to encampment to village to town to city to eventually these large metropolises um, and how that makes this a very complicated process for you guys. Yeah, I mean, essentially we have to plan for the buildings being able to expand, to get taller, to get bigger, um, and that has to happen from day one, right? Like, we need to talk to concept and figure out how we get from, like you said, camp to metropolis mm -hmm. and then kind of work within those bounds. Um, and you know it's there's been a lot of uh discoveries and and pain and tribulation along the way and this guy just died um oh, no. <laughs> but uh <laughs> yeah it's you know it's a it's a work in progress like it is for every stream right like um but i think we've have a good start here and, and we'll be able to really kind of push forward and show progress yeah um, it's in the future beautiful. absolutely it is <clears throat> it is a beautiful view this this area um and i know that you know there's been some changes kind of in how we anticipated node expansion working um <coughs> and utilizing a more district oriented approach um where expansions kind of uh, are previewed or at least telegraphed to the to the node as development continues uh, as expansion grows uh, players start to see construction taking place uh, within the node to represent those expanding areas. Yeah, that, that's right. Um, as as the uh, mayor and the citizens start, you know, bringing more online with their node, uh, you'll start to see the outskirts of, say, like this village, for instance, start to have little construction projects. Um, grass will be cleared. Uh, you'll start to see, you know, uh, scaffolding and other things being placed, as well as materials, and you'll start to see the the village expand into a town and then a town into a city and so forth and so on um and it's really exciting to to be able to kind of build those systems and, and visually still have them look you know well you can see how it looks but yeah absolutely and it and it's not just you know obviously for those of you who might be a little bit newer to the audience and the project the systems that are in place to accompany this node progression these city progressions across the world are really intended to to be defined by player activity player action player choices um whoops we have a little bit of a weird mesh issue over there but that's okay um the uh really meant to reflect the player choices right and that includes building construction and, and as we were talking about earlier these buy orders are the primary method by which um, nodes can procure uh, the resources necessary one of the other methods by which nodes uh, can help um, uh, kind of utilize that expansion is through treasury acquisition uh, with taxation with trade agreements and other nodes Chris, we have some resources we've collected. Where are we going to head to next to kind of utilize that? Well, if you'll follow me over here. All righty. Uh, we're going to go to the warehouse. All right. I'm on my way with you to the warehouse. Uh, now, this is a building that you're going to, you know, manage your material and item storage. Uh, you're going to obviously interface with the buy order manager. Uh, I think he's called the requisition agent these days. All right. Cool. So if we're going to want to talk to this lovely fellow over here. This guy here? Yep. All right. Let's see here. Okay, here we go. 
All right, and as you see, kind of the portrait still, <clears throat> you know, outstanding. You're going to see that some of the UI. Um, greetings, citizen. I am tasked with purchasing goods, which I'm, how dare him refer to me as a citizen? We need to fix the uh, the greeting tables. <laughs> I mean, really, the disrespect. Okay, uh, I am tasked with purchasing goods, <laughs> which the node uses to construct and maintain its varied services. Would you like to see our current requisitions? I would indeed. Exchange rate. Okay. All right. And so now anybody who is participating uh, as a citizen or as just a, a player in the game can go to these locations and they can fulfill these buy orders. So right now I'm seeing that I can adjust the quantity of goods that I'm going to be offering to the node. And we might have a little bit of a problem here because it's saying that the total value of goods I want to contribute are 232 currency worth, gold worth, uh, to, the, to the node. Well, you're exchanging two for every... You're getting two for every package you're fulfilling. And um, you can fulfill all of them, it looks like. Should I do that? I mean, do you want to share the love? Um, <laughs> okay, I'll do that. So I exchange. Confirm. Let's see here. Total materials. Process this order for 232. I will confirm that. Boom. Done. So, and now, so now I have acquired node currency in exchange for this uh for these materials correct uh also you did all of it you didn't share anything uh oh what does that mean uh well the currency is bound so you can't trade it with anyone so oh. you fulfilled the whole buy order and you took all the reward oh <laughs> i thought you meant share as in like i would take that and then later I would use what I received and give those to other people in other means, like through, you know, servitude as a servant oriented type leader. You know what I mean? Like I didn't know you meant actually not fulfill the order. Listen, I need, I need some node currency. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't know that's what you meant. I thought you meant share as in like me give more resources. I didn't. Okay. Uh, will that be a problem or are we good? No, we're good. We're good. Oh, okay, okay, just, okay. Cool, I'm just cool. a little hurt. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know that. Well, I can speak with a guy. I know some people here at this note. <laughs> okay, okay, for sure. <laughs> Hook me up. All right, so we fulfilled this buy order. What is next in this loop? So now um, we are going to talk about taxes. You just okay. spent as a node 25 gold to uh, initiate that buy order, buy order, right? Yes. Eventually, I, we're going to need. The treasury says I have 75 remaining. Yeah, and that should be enough to build the building, but you probably want to start replenishing now, right? Yes. Um, so you're going to open up your uh, node panel again. Okay. And take yourself to the treasury page. Done. Uh, and you're going to look, there's a taxes area. Taxes area, taxes It says area. tax rates. Oh, I see that. Okay. Tax um, rates. And you're going you're gonna to be able to adjust those as the mayor. So I want to go to advanced details. Yep. Okay. Oh, I see. Okay, perfect. And so this is, I see that there are a number of different uh, potential modifiers. Um, these probably are going to be uh, offered out um, as either the node levels up or as um, upgrades. How does that work? Talk to me a little bit about these yes. um, modifiers. So at a high level um, in early node development, you're not going to get access to a lot of these, right? This is probably pretty close to what a node level 3 is going to end up getting. Okay. Um, and we've broken the things that cost money in the node into different categories, right? Um, as the node uh, levels up, you're going to get access to kind of deeper controls on the taxes so that you as a mayor can uh, kind of incentivize players to come to your node to do certain things, right? If you're a node that loves um you know smithing you're probably going to want to lower your taxes on artisanship to incentivize players to be here um but then you might want to drive up taxes and other avenues that players aren't necessarily coming to your node for but are using out of convenience right mm -hmm. okay cool so we need to generate some more income yep so i would recommend cranking those taxes Oh, man, not again. Oh, here we go. <laughs> this is not me. This is... It takes a village. Literally. Well, that's what we're doing right now. It it takes from a village. It yeah. takes from a villager. <laughs> no, just, and, it, and it goes to the roads, right? It, yes! <laughs> it goes to the potholes oh. in the roads. There <laughs> seems to be quite a lot of them here. I have adjusted the tax rate to 
All right, now if we go over here to this guy, All right. you can go ahead and buy some stuff and 75% of the base cost of these items is going to go to the uh, is going to go to the treasury. Ooh. Let's see here. Uh, this is a bit grayed out for me. Maybe I don't. Guys, again, you're going to see some placeholder stuff. Uh, uh, it looks is, like. I don't have room for some stuff, so I'm just going to be killing some things. Nobody pay any attention to the uh, non-existent icons. <laughs> yeah, some of that art is still pending. Um, okay, I will now interact with this gear vendor and let's see if he can sell me some items. You know, these are grayed out for me. Do you have any money? Oh my god, I have no money. It looks like you probably only have node currency. I need some money. <laughs> I'm going to use a cheat panel. Nobody look. This is a little bit of a cheat panel. Okay, you're going to see uh, where I can... <clears throat> you're saying your mirror is broke right now, right? We'll just, we'll just yeah. pick it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody, <laughs> nobody sees anything. Uh, where no, do I maybe you here? did need that node currency more than I did. Yeah. So uh, what do I do? Character, gold. Let me get, set, get some gold. Um, give gold. You know, I'm going to give myself a thousand... And I will now speak with this individual again who was so rude and curt with me when I tried to buy stuff from him. Didn't know who I was as the mayor. Um, okay, cool. So we want to generate some currency for the node. We're just going to demonstrate here making some purchases. Um, oops, I probably need to... Hold on. Sorry, my bad. I'm going to select... Some of these different items. How do I make that purchase? So I'm just selecting these items. Yep, you should just be able to right click them. Right click. Oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. My bad. Okay, how much gold do we need for the node right now? Oh, uh, this is more not for you to just make a bunch of gold right away, but just to make sure we're getting more gold over time. We have okay. enough to make the building. Okay, let me check the <clears throat> node treasury. The node treasury now has 112. That should be plenty. Um, mm -hmm. So, now, you want to build a building, Steven? I want to build a building. All right, well, let's go have a nice little waltz. Uh, well, actually, open your... Open your mayor panel here for us. Okay, mayor panel is open. Uh, and you're going to hit N and go to the buildings tab. Done. Now, here you're going to see a list of all the buildings we currently have constructed. Uh, since this is a pretty new node, all the buildings in this list are uh, what we call default buildings, which means they come uh, pre-constructed with the node. But if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you're going to see the empty plots. Okay, very cool. And, uh, and just to be clear, the default buildings are offering default services, as you were saying, apartments, uh, warehouse for storage, or the caravansary for the, um, the caravans and reception of those caravans. Like, all nodes will have a base default list of services that are offered uh, regardless of type. And then what we're doing now is we're specializing the node. Um, to cater specific services in order to draw traffic of players to us. Right, yeah. All the services that come default with the node, we've kind of, as a design team, deemed essential, right? Mm -hmm. um, we want caravans to move around the world, so everyone should have a caravansary. We want players to have storage, so everyone should have a warehouse, right? Cool. Um, but that doesn't mean those default buildings can't be upgraded and specialized themselves, right? Awesome. Um, but... The empty plots are where you really get to start specializing your node. All right. And I see a smithy under artisanship. Correct. Okay, I've selected the building. Yep. Oh, okay, uh, here we go. We have a little bit of a tree here that talks about its expansions. Yeah, so uh, buildings can expand, and as I kind of alluded to with the default buildings, they specialize as they expand, right? So this isn't like a traditional um skill tree it's it's exclusionary more like a tech tree right mm -hmm. so 
selecting uh, the next upgrade for it will lock out the other two paths, right? Um, so as you get better with the building, it will continue to narrow, uh, which allows lots of nodes to carve out lots of niches in the world. Very cool. And so <clears throat> because of this, because it's exclusionary, it would be relevant for uh, certain nodes in order to um, achieve a broader spectrum of upgrade potential within a particular uh, uh, a building type to potentially build multiple of these buildings. Yeah, exactly, right? If you want to be the home to weaponsmithing in your node, you're probably going to have three smithies to capitalize on uh, slashing, bludgeoning, and piercing weapons, right? Um, and then there are other things you can do with the policy system or with the relic system to kind of amp that up even further. Very cool. Very cool. And so <clears throat> let's say, um, and I know we don't have this, or I'm, I'm not sure if we have this yet implemented, but um, let's say, for example, I as the mayor, I'm about to start this build, right? I'm going to, yep. do I just click on this build right now? Yep. All right. Oh, okay, here we go. Uh, construction yep. requirements. So I have the bins of stone, and it looks like we have the cords of wood. Yep. Citizen contribution. So the citizen contribution, that is in reference to when this construction project begins, citizens will need to come to the building and, and contribute resources to aid in its development. Yeah, so um, unlike buy orders, you're not directly rewarded for this, right? Um, as a player. This is uh, kind of our way of ensuring that citizens want the thing that the mayor is asking them to do, or is mm. spending resources on, right? So if you're a mayor and you're just like, ah, I'm going to build a bunch of this uh, building that no one wants, um, then players aren't going to contribute to it and they're not going to get built. Good call. Very cool. All right, let me confirm this. Players will have two million days to provide the resources for construction. Well, that's good. You know, I want to be a lenient mayor. Um, and, I, you know, as many in the audience know, we expect Ashes to have a very long and fruitful lifespan as a product. Um, and two million days is a bit on the, you know, maybe conservative side of what we'll actually see overall. Um, but I think it's a worthwhile time. Are we good with that? What do you think? Chris? Uh, uh, yeah, that's that sounds great. Okay, two million days it is. <laughs> okay, where do we go to see this building? Uh, so we've constructed it over here. Uh, if you want to follow me this way. All right, I'm fo I'm following. I don't normally run in my own town, but I will. I will run for this. Listen building. up, I got places to go, people to see. People to see. <laughs> you work at the behest <laughs> of the mayor. <laughs> uh, so. You notice there's a gentleman here you can talk to. Um, and this is. Does he also work the, for me, just to be clear? He's a uh, He does, he does. Okay. Technically, he works for the city. I am, uh, I am the city. I am the law. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, right. And uh, this gentleman is the construction foreman, so this is where players will get to go to donate resources to the construction of a building. Okay, all right. Let's see here. So he has nothing of nothing acquired. Well, what are, is it you say you do here? Mr. Construction Foreman. He hasn't collected yet any resources? Oh, you just initiated it. <laughs> do I have to do everything myself? Should I give him a hundred uh, of the oak log? Uh, I mean, I think that's a fair thing to do. All right. Let us donate. We shall donate to the Foreman. Oh, it's beginning to construct. Now, Bruno and Scott did a great job with this uh, construction, animation, and visual effects. Um, as you will see, you're going to see a sped up version of this here. But typically, Chris talked to me a little bit about the um, time expectation for these types of projects. And, of course, how that's a variable depending on the stage of the node and the building type itself. Yeah, so, um, you know, we want this to be an exciting thing. So once materials are kind of co contributed to it and it's ready to finish, um, there's going to be, you know, any kind of variable from like 15 to 20 minutes to even a couple of days for it to finish constructing, depending on kind of the power that the building offers to the players, right? Very cool. And, and <clears throat> um, James, Adam, Tristan, talk to me a little bit about how you guys go about 
constructing these different, you know, more modular sets of, of building creation and, and what it takes to kind of, you know, master that across the multiple different cultures that we're anticipating uh, uh, to, to, to present within these villages. You yeah. Take one, Adam? yeah, sure. I mean, it's a, it's a lot of trial and error, but, you know, the it took a lot of practice to figure out, you know, what the correct size of the buildings and the plots, the walls, the doors, all those things are, and then to dial them in so that going forward, any future races, it, it's all kind of somewhat plug and play as long as we're making them to those specs. Um, the big thing is the aesthetic and, and how that will change between races, which is, you know, still a work in progress, but like in this, for example, this one is a lot of Anglo-Saxon type architecture influence. Yeah, um, the Kalar, absolutely. Yeah, but that's 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 how, how it works for the most part, and it's all modular, so we can make these buildings in mostly any size we want. So we could reach all the way up to the sky multiple floors if we wanted to not saying we would but uh, and that's that's the idea so then this right here will construct those pieces for the player one piece at a time very cool very cool <clears throat> yeah i love the uh, you know we we previously had a different version of this in in um oh look it has a little fireworks playing above the building <laughs> that's awesome so it's drawing attention kind of to the uh to the construction um we had a version of this obviously in in alpha one and um <clears throat> you know that was very sped up uh for what we were trying to accomplish there this technique is uh you know meant to more represent that that longer period of of construction requirement um, yeah um and a lot of what you see right now it's technically being generated procedurally mm -hmm. um by the tech from our tech art team which is uh, Bruno has been putting together, which is like basically we kind of took a an approach similar to other games that you might see in like strategy games and stuff like that. So there's a yes. scaffolding approach that kind of builds things up and forms around, and you'll see some people kind of working and hammering. Um, it's very rudimentary at this current point in time, but yeah, no, the the goal is to have it be as versatile as possible, so that when we actually need to make a hundred of variations of these, um, we don't have to sit there and make animations one by one which we did in the past um which gets very complicated very expensive but in this case it's more of a procedural you know you plug and play like that right set, but i do run i do want to clarify that we're not saying that these nodes are fully procedurally generated it's the building aspect is but the nodes themselves still have a handmade aspect to it right Correct. Yeah, this is all just for the construction phase, so we can kind of have things done in a way that feels natural, but doesn't really take years and years to actually complete the final product. Right. Awesome. Um, absolutely. Very, very impressive work. So, Chris, now that we have constructed this smithy, <coughs> what are we doing? Do you have a little duckling following you? The ducklings are very I, aggressive I, right now. I have one following me right now. <laughs> oh my god! But that can be fixed. No, 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 no. <laughs> do it. No. Do it. Do, do not it. kill that. Do it now. Do, do it. <laughs> do not kill that duck. Oh my oh. god! Oh god! Oh what god. are you That's doing? What are you, you doing? You Did you just murder that duck? You, you just murder our tax rate? Just, oh my god, you can't kill innocent animals over your disgruntledness <laughs> tax rates? I would I would say that's more for food for the village, but... And, you know, rebellion, I'm trying to... What have you food. done? <laughs> you can't even eat that. There's not valuable meat on this creature yet. That was uh, just, I, just, I, just, I just got a hunting certificate, so... Did you really? Oh, no. oh, oh you're no. dead. <laughs> well, oh, no. oh, wow. The goddess Maybe. of creation herself has smote you. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> All right. It needs to be done. Chris, what are we going to do with the smithy? Well, what do you want to do? We can uh, do some armor smithing. We can do some weapon smithing. I, I honestly think after that heinous act against that duck, you really need some better weapons to defend the uh, 
beautiful creatures of this node. Agreed. I am so angry. I could just scream. Oh. <laughs> sorry, uh, sorry. Well, over here is the weaponsmithing station. All right. Cool. I was looking at this a little bit earlier. Whoops. I turned off my UI. All right. What do we have? Uh, well, I hear the artisanship team hooked you up with the ability to make uh, a blood sword. Oh, do I have materials? Oh, I do have some materials. What should we do? Oh, the sandals of holding bag. It's like infinite space. <laughs> that is a GM bag. Um, okay, so I do have some materials. What do we want to do with this material? Well, do you want a blood sword or not? Well, I mean, I don't know. Do I want a blood sword? Is a blood sword good? Is it better than what I already have? Where is the blood sword? Crystallized oh. blood sword. Okay, oh. I see. It's going to be a pretty spicy sword. Okay, very cool. Um, yeah, let's try this. What are we going to do here? So I already have the materials for it. So I just go yep. to craft one quantity. Hold on, it says I can't craft this. Yes, yeah, so you got to add your mold to it. Oh. I have selected my iron weapon mold and I am using <coughs> that mold and crafting oh I do have a crystal blood sword now I shall rule with a mighty fist let me equip this well <coughs> do I actually have oh I do have it oh okay that's pretty sweet I like that yeah, it looks great. Very cool. All right, so now now that we have constructed this building, there are also a number of upgrade paths that players can utilize to specialize the building further. We previewed that in the tech tree for the building, and each building comes with that sort of customizable um, uh, path of upgrades that are possible, and those continue to give the node a higher specialization uh, which makes it relevant for player traffic. Right, and the idea with that too is um, no one node can do anything, right? So um, it kind of is leaning into this idea that you need to travel your goods around the world and go to a lot of places to do a lot of things, right? Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> absolutely. Um, this is a beautiful... I mean, gosh, this is just... I love the atmospherics. I love the, the more nature-oriented aspects of the interior of the node. Now, this node, uh, Tristan and Adam James, this has a bit more topography uh, than what we were seeing in Alpha 1. Talk to me a little bit about the types of node templates and footprints that we are leveraging uh, with the design of these, of these villages and cities. Um, yeah, so there should be um, a, kind of a handful of different types that you'll experience in the world, and they all have their different benefits. Um, so in this case, we kind of have a plateau landscape layout for this one. Um, it's not like you said the flat landscapes right. that we've done in the past. Um, we've also got ones that will be like rivers flowing through it, um, and as well as like being nudged up against, say, like a, a body of water or like a cliff face sort of style so in this case it's this is a pretty one of the more basic versions that you'll see for the current um layout styles that we have but yeah yeah not only that the the, the dote itself will have its own type that it, that's best suited to you know develop into um i think this one's an academic node yeah this one is academic so <clears throat> um i see we have a kind of a placeholder node type building here yeah um, that's the town hall Oh, is that the town hall? I apologize. This is yeah, the placeholder one over here, the kind of citadel-looking one, yeah? Yep. yep. Yeah, that is a work in progress. Um, so we have that standing in for now. Beautiful. So this is kind of where all the activities take place for, you know, uh, citizenship interactions, the paying of these dues, um, the opportunity for players to kind of interface with uh, their local government and the custom uh, quest arcs that are available based off of the surrounding POIs. Um, <clears throat> You know, up here is kind of the city center, so to speak. Right. Right. Yep. This is where you know uh, elections happen, right? Um, normally. 
<laughs> when, when you don't GM command yourself wow, mayor. Wow, <laughs> unbelievable. I just sat down. You guys told me to GM myself mayor. Um, um, there's also a place where, you know, punishments could happen. Ah, oh, uh, where's that? Are there like gallows over here or something? Yeah. Is Are that you threatening the, type the of, mayor? Yeah, is that the type of mayor that I am? Do I just have like public hangings or something? I mean, if you're that type of mayor, you could just hang anyone, anyone. Uh, Unbelievable. Right. Depends upon who messes with the ducklings, that's all. Yep. <laughs> I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed that we have a, a bit of homage that we're paying to the... <coughs> excuse me. To the windmill monster that many players experienced in our pre-alpha oh, testing. Uh, yeah. Yep. And you guys remember that? That was like two days straight of us getting stuck at a loading screen back in like 2018, 2017. That was a fun time. I love I the windmill. A mimic the size of a windmill would be pretty. I think we actually <laughs> did turn. So at some point we updated that image to be a windmill monster that was eating oh, the yeah, yeah. pre-alpha players when they tried to oh, join. Yeah. That was great. It was really good. Oh, it's beautiful. This is absolutely beautiful. So, um, you know what? I would like to thank each of you for showing our players the update to nodes. This is one of the one of many updates that players will be seeing <clears throat> over the course of the next um, time till Alpha Two. <clears throat> and as it relates to kind of the systems design um, of these nodes. Uh, showcasing the core loops uh, with the mayors helping to initiate buy orders um, as well as commissions in order to generate these node commodities these node <clears throat> these node inventory items uh, by which then the node utilizes to kick off certain either events or service building constructions <clears throat> that the uh, that create an additional loop for players to participate in. Um, I think that this is very exciting, that the node is absolutely beautiful and it hits the aesthetic that we want. But what's most important is to get your guys' feedback in the community, uh, the, you guys as our players, giving us your thoughts about the visual fidelity that these villages are representing. You'll have an opportunity to see additional um, uh, node stages as we progress. This is a lot of work that the environment team has been doing a phenomenal job, uh, in my opinion opinion and creating <clears throat> but you guys need to give us your thoughts you like what you see here what can be done better and then we are going to chat a little bit more about some of the system changes that we have introduced as part of our road to alpha 2 as it relates to the nodes so, so yes go ahead yeah is this nodes part four or part five I this <laughs> <laughs> I don't no, know. No. This is this is you're gonna kill me. I'm just doing, uh, <laughs> I hope is, you're okay. <laughs> this is not yet nodes part four, but this is getting close. Um, oh, okay. No, you guys did a great job. Uh, yeah, I'm sure really everyone good. will get that reference there. Yes, yeah. exactly. Um, but Chris and I will be joining you guys in just a moment to talk a little bit more in detail about these systems in just a moment. Thanks, guys, for joining us. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Bye. you. Yep. Bye. Bye. Bye.